Directing models in relation to camera movement is a skill that needs to be developed over time. Knowing what to look for will help you get there faster. What's up YouTube, Jock Rafferty here with another exciting tutorial. In this episode, we'll focus on directing models and how it relates to camera movement. Whether you're working with a director or doing everything yourself, knowing how to move the camera with model movement can make a huge difference in the final outcome. In this video, I'm going to share a few practical examples by breaking down my thought process. Some of these shoots were done with a director, but even with another person calling the movements, it's essential for the DOP to understand how these movements will make your scenes flow better. For solo shooters, knowing what to tell your models can also be a daunting task unless you have a few guidelines to work by. If you don't know what action to assign to your model, the easiest way is to use props or to make them go somewhere. Props give your models something to do and unless they need to deliver dialogue, you always want them to interact with something. Put them on the move and the journey alone will instantly make things feel more natural. This really helps if you're not working with professional actors or working with models without video experience. I do this in all my videos, but it's important to keep the props relevant. In the video we did with Yannick Allied, he hardly had any action where he didn't interact with a prop of some sort. And these props are all used in context with his story of being a landscape photographer. Yannick is not a professional actor, but working with props he felt comfortable with made it work. The FX3 launch video was split into two parts. In the first half, everyone is on the move and interacting with props. The second part is more like a fashion film and doesn't rely on props as much. In this case, the first half of the story was determined by the type of props we were able to use in an authentic way. For example, we had a guy making coffee, another guy working on a laptop and a girl riding on a bicycle. The challenge was to give an action to the fourth actor without her just walking through the park. We used the cell phone and the handbag as props to initiate more action. And this gave us an opportunity to connect the characters by having the main talent cycle passed. Now that your model has something to do, let's pair it with camera movement. All right, so we're gonna work with this example while it's still fresh. And basically I'm just going to discuss two things. The first is the camera movement and then also how the model interacts with the camera movement. So this is the final take we ended up using. As you can see, the camera's coming up and before it reaches the top, she starts looking up and round about the time her head stops, my movement stops. But then there's the slow movement of her carrying on as she looks at the cyclist coming past. Now, if I were to compare it with the other alternatives where I actually didn't get it right, we can clearly see which movement's gonna work the best. So let's look at the first example. Okay, so what's happening is here, the camera is moving up too quickly and she's looking up too late. In this case, it was just more my timing that was off, but the main problem here is the fact that she's still looking down. By the time I come at the top, she starts looking up and it just feels off, it doesn't feel right. We can take the second example over here, let's have a look. In this case, she looked up too early or I just moved too slow. So it's really important to get the timing right. The only challenge with this shot was we had the cyclist coming past. So we had to make sure that as she looks up, as the camera moves, the cyclists are coming past. So it was just a matter of calling action at the right time and again at the second time when she was supposed to look up. So in this case, the director called action for the cyclist, but because I'm doing the movement, I have to call action for Sasebo to look up because that's the only way for me to get this perfect timing because I know when I start moving, round about here I say action, she listens to my instruction and she looks up and there we go we got a perfect movement but in the other examples we didn't get the timing right so over here i moved up the camera too quickly and over here she looked up too quickly and then just one more example so this is better but it's not there yet and i'll tell you what's bothering me with this shot as you can see the movement is good the camera movement is perfect now compared to the first uh, right example this camera movement is perfect but the way she looks up is almost too quick and I'll just play it back in normal speed so you can see. It's too sudden, so let's compare it with the first example. 
There we go. You can see how there's this easing in. As the camera comes up, she's slowly looking up and tracking with her head. And that's why it's essential to understand the relationship between the camera moving up and her looking up. If you can get that balance right, your shots are bound to look more cinematic. And then just another example to explain how the double action works. Yeah, we've got another scene. Let's just quickly look at it. We've got Oliver and then a reveal shot on Sasebo. And you can look at the behind the scenes over there. It's me with the gimbal. And then just look at the shot again. So what's happening here is we've got two actions. Okay, so the first action is over here on Oliver. So Oliver is actually looking at the camera. And then there's this moment where he closes his eyes and he looks away. Let's look at that that so that action is called by Willem the director okay then we have the second action over here where Sasipo at the right time starts looking into my camera and as I move the camera she slowly looks up into the lens and that is what makes this move so cinematic as the moment she comes into focus she starts looking into the camera and tra almost tracks the camera as I come closer so this is another example of where I had to call the second action so if you look take a look at over here so Willem calls action here Oliver does his action and then as the camera comes around at the right moment when I know the timing is right I call the second action on Sasipo and I would say Sasipo look up and she starts looking up and I know exactly that I'm getting the shot because I'm in charge of the movement and that's why it's essential to understand that relationship that even though there is a director that when you're in charge of a movement like this you need to know when the action needs to go and how the model should react and in this case again the way Sasipo is tracking the camera the movement with her her face is almost moving against my movement and it just creates this really beautiful cinematic movement then we have this example where I actually did the directing. So this was a solo shoot. I did the shooting and directing solo. And I'm just going to show you what I did here. So at first, as the camera moves up, I'm calling action right about here. So Nico starts looking into the camera and his face is moving. But right about here, the frame is already where I want it, but he's not going to stop the movement. So if I were to stop the camera now, it would be off. So instead of stopping the camera, I'm actually carrying on with the movement, but I can't move up because I'm gonna have too much head space over here. So I move to the left and that's because he's moving from left to right. So he's already moving in that direction and the camera is now gonna move in that direction. And that is what makes this shot work. So you can see over there, camera's going left, his body's going right. And that's a really beautiful movement. So let's just look at it in normal speed. There we go. So just to explain again, the camera's going up calling action and as I get into the right frame I realize that I can't pan up anymore so I'm panning left immediately and because he's moving in the opposite direction it's just a nice movement. Next example same shoot different setup we're doing the three models over here and again I'm still directing this myself and the best way to explain what's happening is to take you behind the scenes so I'm going to do a side by side comparison and that's the best way to make sense of what's happening over here. So as you can see I shot this on the FX6 handout basically just pressing it against my body. But um, we're going to focus on the movement and the way the model interacts with the other models. So we'll start over here you'll see on the left I'm actually starting with the movement so the camera is slowly panning up. And as I'm panning up I need to know when to call action so I'm going to call action before I actually see his eyes. So you'll see the moment the eyes come in frame, he starts turning around and action. He looks around, interacts, and it's important to note that I'm carrying on with the movement. I'm not stopping because they are actually moving towards me at an upward slope, which means I want to maintain this headspace more or less. And if I carry on, you can see how the camera is still slowly moving up. And that's why there's that nice rhythm to it. So let's just look at it in normal speed. And there we go, that works really well. And then moving on, same shoot, different setup, different model. And there's something wrong with this shot, it's really boring, she's not really doing much, it actually looks unnatural the way she moves over there. So I did two things over here, I gave her some movement and I also created a foreground. So I literally put a chair in here just to make it more interesting. And then I made her look away and called action looking into the camera. So let's take a look at that. And that alone, that's a shot by itself. So, But just making a look away and having this nice foreground, this boring shot from here now becomes a lot more interesting. And then the same in this example over here. I just had a sit back and kind of look up by calling action and I did a slight movement. And action. There we go. You can see as she moves back, she looks up. 
the camera's moving that just makes it a lot more interesting than this first shot where she doesn't really it looks like she doesn't know what to do and then one more example from the shoot we have this beautiful shot over here there's just a lot happening it's this nice movement with the arms and her head coming around and again show you the behind the scenes so let's go side by side on that so take a look at the camera movement and the two actions there's two actions happening over here the one is her hand and the second is her face so it's really important that you see that as I move the camera up from here, I call action on the hands and when I see the cameras coming into the right place for her face, I call action for the second time. And, and as she comes into frame, that's just a really beautiful movement getting over there. So let's just look at it normal speed again. You can see and action and action. Moving on to this next scene, we've got a tracking shot with a focus on the backpack. And there's two things to note over here. The backpack is actually a prop, so it helps our actor to do something. And then the second part is the tracking shot. So let's look at that again. As the camera goes down, there's something happening. The camera starts to move up when it touches the ground. So let's just look at it. From here to there, I'm perfectly tracking the backpack. As it hits the ground, instead of stopping, I go down a little bit more as his hand comes closer. And then to ease into the next movement, I'm taking the camera back up again, almost giving it a bounce. And that's where the second hand movement comes in. And that just makes it flow into the next shot. Then wrapping up, we've got a few scenes over here where we did some tracking shots in a food style shoot. And I'm just gonna focus on how I'm actually calling action to get the best type of tracking shot. So we'll take a look at this example of the rolling onion. And basically, if you look at my camera movement over here, you'll see that I'm starting my camera movement just a little bit before I'm actually saying action. So take a look at that. The camera starts, I'm calling action, she moves, I'm getting the shot, and right about there, I'm kind of carrying on just a little bit to make sure I get it in focus. And the reason for starting a little bit sooner is just to make sure that I'm actually getting a smoother camera movement. So it's not just about the timing, but easing in gives you a smoother camera movement. So there you have it. The relationship between model movement and camera movement is crucial to getting better shots. If you found this tutorial helpful in any way, come say hi on my social channels. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.